I was like, if only my PowerPoint was pulling up just that fast. I know. All right, here we go. Hey, guys. How's it going? Y'all alive and well, staying alive in this heat? Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Making sure your electrolytes stay upright. You know, I have to say it. You know, the medical professional, we got to say it. You know, I encourage Pedialyte versus Gatorade or any of the others. Okay, okay, I'm right, I'm right. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Keeping y'all healthy and whole, amen. Keeping y'all revitalized. Okay. So I, you know, and I give major kudos to the, to just Prophet Angela and our wonderful IT team. So when I initially recorded this, I recorded it differently and it kind of botched it up. So the recording wasn't that great. And you guys just had slides and an audio recording. And I understood there were questions. And hey, the latter part of tonight, we are going to have a Q&A session, okay? Because I want you guys to walk away with an understanding of this. And here's why. Lean in. Here's why. You need to be able to explain the Bible without using the Bible. Okay. Does that make sense? Is that all right? Is that all right to say? Because, see, there is a whole slew of people outside these four walls that care nothing about your God. They don't care about your Jesus. They don't care about your Bible. They don't care about nothing other than their next Instagram post, okay? Let's just be real here in this moment. And if we cannot explain the Bible outside of the Bible, outside of Jesus said, then we in trouble. Because imagine the prophets and apostles of old, they didn't have the Bible, yet they were able to make this very clear, and souls were added to them daily. So, got some work to do, right? So one of the key features is, of course, not just to, you know, that you are obviously able to explain that Jesus is not coming back tomorrow, but also to display, yes, to give you tools, to give you resources, to give you the knowledge and the understanding. You don't have to be a physicist, okay? But to give you that knowledge and truth and understanding that you're able to explain the Bible without simply Jesus said. Because we need to be able to do that in this day and time. As well as even honestly to demonstrate the need for prophets, apostles, teachers, all of them, to be in the sciences. For so long, we have been talked out of our place. And that didn't solely end in politics. That didn't, we, we, how, how many people do you know work in NASA? Okay, how many Christians do you know work in NOAA? Okay, how many Christians do we know work in the CDC? I know a couple, but that's only because that's my sphere of influence. Guys, this is what we're talking about. This is why this is needed. Because all we know of and all that we can gather on is what they make public. We don't know what's happening behind closed doors. So it is vital that we have scientific prophets, that we have scientific teachers, that we have scientific evangelists, that we have scientific apostles, because we are called to the planet. We are called to govern this world. And see, we can't do that when there's all these, you know, sometimes we forget that NASA is actually a government agency. It's not a private agency, although they're turning it to private. It's a government agency. And see, that's one key place in all those spheres of science that we opted out of because we were taught that evolution was the new best thing. And while evolution isn't in the Bible, so apparently science is, science is, is a tool and it's as good as the tool that, uh, the hands that it's in. That is one thing to remember about the sciences. It can be manipulated. It can give the appearance of whoever is handling it. And see, we haven't been the ones handling the sciences in a really, really long time. 
when the sciences, those initial laws of gravity, those uh, all those initial laws of physics, those were discovered by Christians. They may have not been a prophet or say what not, but they were Christians. They believed in God. They were God-fearing men and women that wanted to give God his due. And see, we have opted out of so much of that because like, well, that's the world. Yes, we're called to be in the world and not of it, but we're still supposed to be in it. We're still, still supposed to be the governing forces in those spheres of influence. Amen. So this is just to give that, that push, you know, for the young, the old. Guys, I'm going to say, there, you are not. I, I know 50-year-olds and, and above that are in med school that are pressing for their doctorate or their PhDs. There's no limit. There's only the limit of what you put on what you put on God. Amen. All right. So being that, all right, let's get into it. So we're going to do just a little bit of review. Uh, and yes, the whiteboard's out. I'm going to be using the whiteboard so we can demonstrate some things, so we can answer some questions, okay? So one of the things that we discussed, go ahead and go to slide eight. So one of the things that we discussed is, remember we talked about electromagnetic fields and gravity and how that affected gravity. So one of the things, and I'm just going to go over here. Actually, I'm going to put the mic down. All right, we're, we're still, we're still going to do this. Okay. So one of the things that we talked about was, is we, we mentioned gravity and how gravity is affected by electricity and by electromagnetic force. So we remember that the geometry, so the shape and the force of gravity is G. Diane, can you grab me just like just this so I can... Just, yeah, either one is fine. That's awesome. Thank you. So is G mu V equals, so the geometry of gravity is 8 pi GT. Because remember, we talked about this. Remember, we talked about this equation. So remember, we talked about the geometry of gravity is space-time, right? Remember we discussed that, okay. And so we know that electromagnetic fields is represented by F, which is encoded into T. So our electromagnetic field or how we map or do electromagnetic field is, making sure I'm doing this right, is F, which that is encoded into T. So, just to help you guys visualize what's going on. So when we mess with our electromagnetic field, we in turn, because this is equal, right? We in turn mess with gravity. And specifically, the geometry Think of the planet, the geometry of gravity. And I, I'm sorry, I do shorthand, so just bear with me. So that's how we know. So what is an electromagnetic field? That is one thing that I did kind of fail to explain. So we have our planet. Let me do this bigger. We have our planet. We have the North Pole and the South Pole. So right now, for our electromagnetic field, it goes north to south. It loops through, thank you so much. It loops through our planet, goes through the core. This is why at the center of our planet, gravity is most, uh, the strongest. So, and these fields go out, and that's how, and where it's the strongest, is at the core, but outside of the Earth's, at, you know, out of, out of the core of the Earth, it, like I said, remember, it stems from the North Pole. So this is where the pole originates. 
And remember, we talked about them being flipped and the reversal and how crazy that would be. So, and that is, but this is the electromagnetic field, meaning this field, so you have, and we'll get into some of the equations in a little bit just briefly, but this is how, mag, how magnetism flows, as well as this, this is the general course of how electricity in general, now we're not talking about you know, just on your device. So in general, the flow of electricity, this is why it's the electromagnetic field, it's both. So hence, we know when we mess over this side of the equation, we mess over with gravity. And so, and this is just, again, this is how electrons, the flow of electricity flows, as well as the flow of magnetism. So here we can see too, when we mess with our electromagnetic field, how we mess with the flow of electricity. So let's go over some, just some of those equations. Thank you so much, so that that kind of makes sense. I know I'm just, I'm hitting the equations just up out of the gate, so it's all fresh in your minds. So you got this, okay. So we know an electric field, just the electric field. We know that an electric field, okay, bear with me. This is gonna get good, I promise. Okay, charges are placed in an electric field. Charges are placed in an electric field. So that electric field experiences force F. Where do we know where F is? Okay. You see how these correlate? So for uh, the, our electric field experiences a force F equals E Q, where E is the strength of the field and Q is the magnitude of charge. You see why, how that's important? Because meant remember, we got equal equals equal. So if I, so if, if that makes sense. So if I drastically boost this, I'm drastically boosting this. Therein ties in, I'm drastically boosting this. Depending on what this could be, I'm having an exponential effect on gravity. Does that kind of make sense? Good, 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 good. I'm so excited. Okay. So here we know the, so the equation for a magnetic field is very similar. So our magnetic field is F equals Q V B. Well, gosh, that looks similar. What is that? So this is force again, force. The force of the field, so a magnetic field experiences force equals Q, which is the quantity of charge. So these, this is charge. This is quantity of charge. Charge, and V here is velocity. So we're going to get into why that's important. Velocity on a field perpendicular B. B, we know, is the planet. Okay, so you, I mean, and just to give you that basic knowledge of all that wonderful wordingness, that's what that means. So you can see there are components equal to both that are in the equation for space time, gravity. Cool beans, we're there, awesome, yay. Okay, see in this Y too, so you can see based on these two equations, since both electric and magnetic fields are related to charges, it is plausible that they are different aspects of the same phenomenon. Why do we say phenomenon? We have no idea why the planet does this. So we see that electricity, the flow of charge, and magnetism, they're part of this same phenomenon. Again, we've been on this planet. We we don't even we so we still can't explain this. We just know that's what it does, which I find is amazing. I mean, God's so cool. Okay. Yep, you guys, you're gonna see the inner nerd coming out. I'm just gonna say it. 
Okay, so that kind of explains that. This is why, and if you can go ahead and advance to slide 10. So I know that's like, there's a lot of wording there. So with that first one, electric, uh, electric current and magnetism, what that basically means is if I have electricity flowing through a wire and I put a magnet next to it, it starts to curve that electric charge. So it starts to change the flow of that charge. It starts to change the path of electricity. So you think if we do that to the planet, that might be a problem? Like our electrical devices or everything that runs off of a charge, not just electricity, is going to be affected? This is why, explains scripture, of why the planet goes dark. Like it's not just the sun is leaving us. Like the planet literally goes dark. And everything falls down to the planet because whether it's in our outer atmosphere, because remember those fields go way, way out into space. So whether it's out in our atmosphere, like satellites or space junk, they're gonna be affected. They're gonna stop working. Hence why what God is saying. Okay, two, magnetic fields cause electric currents. How do we know this? So right, like the North and South Pole, like the opposite ends of a magnet, they resist, right? That's due also to charge. So if you, have you ever taken two magnets and rub, 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 rub them together? You ever do that in like your high school or grade school physics class? You'll create a charge. You'll create a charge based on that electromagnetic field. Hence, when you mess with an electric field, you mess with the flow of charge and you will generate a charge. So, all of that into say charge particles moving in a magnetic field. So if a magnetic field is stationary, but charge particles move through it, this is somewhat stationary, charge particles move through it, um, it will experience a force due to the field that causes them to execute them in a, it will cause them to execute in a circular motion. That's our planet right now. Is this not a circular motion? This is, this is how we know the planet's operating now. Okay. Uh, circular motion. Uh, no. Okay. So note that charged particles in the atmosphere in northern latitudes are trapped by the Earth's magnetic field. When they collide with molecules in our atmosphere, they cause a particular pattern in the lights called the aurora borealis. Who knows what the aurora borealis actually is? The northern lights, exactly. So what are they technically? It's okay, shout it out. They are charged particles from the sun that are getting trapped because in our outer atmosphere, where is it the most strong? The North Pole. So can you, I just can imagine like the conversation that the Godhead had. Can you imagine like charged particles, radiation from the sun, that's where it's getting trapped. And we humans are like, oh, it's so pretty. Oh my gosh, I'm just gonna stand here and look at it. Where anyone else would be like, that's a problem. If they knew that what that was, they'd be like, that's a really, that's charged particles, radiation from the sun that's getting trapped right there. I think that's a problem. So can you imagine the Godhead being like, Holy Ghost being like, God, should we tell him? I mean, I mean, Holy Ghost, um, do, they, do they not know what that, like, they're just staring at it like it's a balloon or something. Like, should we, should we do something? And can you imagine Jesus being like, who are we going to tell? Who would listen? Do you see where they're at right now? They're so busy yet, you know, money cometh to me now. What is, who's going to listen to us? And you remember the Godhead just being like, they'll get there. Eventually, they'll get there. It's okay. They'll get there. Holy Spirit, when? Well, when? <laughs> they're just staring up at it like, this is so beautiful. That's a problem. 
If our atmosphere erodes, that's a problem. We'll get into that. Okay. Alrighty. So does that kind of make more sense? That that electricity, charged particles, and magnetism, they flow in the same path. They they correspond to each other. They, like remember, they said they're they're the flip coin of that phenomenon of how the planet operates. So you mess with one, you mess with the other. That's to give you that example. So Faraday's law. Who knows what a Faraday bag is? We use them all the time in security. This is based off that principle. That's how you can hide a cell phone. You can hide any trace of a cell phone is use a Faraday bag. It's based off of Faraday's law. Okay. A changing magnetic field will cause a current to flow in a wire. Meaning a Faraday bag not only hides like the electrical signature of a cell phone, but it hides any trace of it because it's deflecting. So the only time it connects is when you pull it out and use it. You have to pull it out of that Faraday bag. It's bag, sorry, bag, bag. I'm from the North, we say bag, okay, bag. So again, like I said, we use them a lot in security and it's based off of this law, meaning when you change the magnetic field, you change the flow of electricity, you change the signal that the device is giving out so it can't be traced. Imagine doing that to the whole planet during the reversal. Ain't nothing going to work, people. To give you that example of not just things are falling from the sky, but literally all of our advanced technology is not going to work. Okay, also off of Lenz's law, an electric current induced in a wire caused by a changing electric or magnetic field creates another magnetic field. Well, that's a problem, isn't it? Because this is how out off of everything is, our whole planet, all of our technology, all of our communication services, everything is based off of this. So it's gonna change. So, uh, causes a, a changing magnetic field, creating another magnetic field whose direction opposes the field it created. So it goes in an opposite way. Hence why, well, like I said, when we showed the picture of that reversal, can you show that for me, please? I don't remember what slide that is. Uh, slide seven. There we go. That's why the reversal looks like that. When, we, when this massive earthquake hits the planet, we're going to get into tsunamis and how tsunamis in and of itself create a whole havoc. But this is why the reversal looks like that. Because it's creating fields opposite of itself. And electricity is going with it. So imagine electricity for our planet Electrical charge goes like this, and it's during the reversal, it goes to that. Nothing's going to work. On top of the fact we've messed with gravity, we've changed two I wanted to show you. So if here's our sun, hopefully there's not too much on here. Here's our sun, here's our earth. We've shaken this so bad during this earthquake. We've caused a reversal. We've changed our north and south poles. We're hitting something like this. Oh, we're probably land to something like this. There's a lot of models out there. To where, what does our planet rotate on? The axis of what we know is the North and South Pole, right? That's what dictates our, our current and our magnetic field. So we've gone from here to either here or somewhere in here. We've changed the orbit, I'm sorry, we've changed the rotation. And we know from the earthquake in Indonesia that that happens. So we've changed the rotation of the earth so it no longer turns like this, but it's turning like this. And we've altered, because of gravity, its orbit how it orbits around the sun. Hence, very explanation, you know, especially if we go into this rotation, only this part, and we rotate over only this part of, so only like this part and this part of our plant's orientation are now getting sun. 
So like the planet hasn't tilted, it's just the poles have. And so what do we have here? It's mostly the equator. We don't have a whole lot of land here in this part, it's mostly ocean. Hence why a majority of the land base is dark. It's a black planet. On top of the fact, we have our solar power, might as well be useless. Any other kind of generate, even like I said, think about even think about even nuclear energy. So you're like, well, we have, we have we have nuclear energy, we have wind energy. First off, God only knows what the weather is doing, so I wouldn't wait for wind energy. So what does that really leave us? Yes, that's true. That's right. I'm sorry. Thank you for helping me remember. Yes. Yes. So yes, no wind. So we have no wind energy. But think about what nuclear energy is based off of. It's based off of the atom. But so, okay, the atom is composed of neutrons, protons, and electrons. Protons are positively charged. Electrons are negatively charged. Neutrons are neutral. Hence, they're called neutrons. We've altered the flow of charge. So think about that. Even nuclear energy is like Bobo. We don't know what it's going to do. It's not going to be very effective. OK, so that entail just kind of describes that of how to, in fact, the planet goes dark. All righty. Revelation 6, 13 through 14. And the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops its late figs. What law of physics do we know also occurred with the dropping of a fruit? Law of gravity. Scripture is telling us what's going to be affected. Okay? Like a mighty wind. So we know, like I said, even we just based off of the science, we know that gravity is going to be affected. Then the sky recedes as a scroll when it is rolled up. So think of an average piece of paper and you roll it up. It's literally just being pulled back. Okay. And every mountain and every island was moved out of its place. This is how we know it's a massive earthquake. And either it's going to be covered in water by tsunamis or it's literally going to be land masses are going to be shifted. One of the things we won't even get into tonight is we know massive earthquakes also affect the ring of fire. Who knows what the ring of fire is? Who knows what the ring of fire is? So it's, you can trace it. And like I said, th this will be your homework. This will be your homework for next time. So the ring of fire is where all of these tectonic plates meet. And where these tectonic plates meet, it pushes them up and out. And it allows magma to come out. So hence a volcano. So here we know volcanoes are a problem, right? They're not, they're not, they're not very nice to us. They don't really like us. They don't really care. They just kind of do their thing. Hence, if you activate as many of those as you do through a cosmic earthquake, that's a problem. Because we already have this earthquake that's causing all of these things. Not to mention what's happening to our atmosphere. So here in this session, I'm going to kind of go through and explain how the atmosphere is being affected. And when scripture says the sky receded like a scroll, what that actually means and how that actually comes to be. Okay. Here too is just an example of, this is all, this is just to give you a, an idea. This is where all, the, this is how much space junk. This isn't the satellites. This isn't a, this is just space junk. This is all the space junk orbiting the planet right now. Imagine all of that. Okay, electricity being affected, mag, you know, our magnetic fields being affected, gravity's being affected. All of that is slingshotting into the planet at the same time. That's a problem, just the space junk. That's not to mention everything else that's up there. Okay, so major earthquakes do cause tsunamis. 
You guys saw what a tsunami is, right? You watched the video. You're smart. You, you know what it is, right? Okay. So again, a tsunami is this earthquake that can happen on land or under the sea, like in Indonesia. It actually was on that fault that is on the outside of the island that affected faults that were in the ocean. So it had this kind of dual effect. And that's what's going to happen to our planet. Indonesia was just a case study. If you can think about it that way, that 2005 earthquake was just kind of a case study of what's going to happen to the whole planet. Okay? Hence why Jesus isn't coming tomorrow. And hence why right after that, it's not, okay, <laughs> there's not a lot of going to be happening. Okay, so again, it's when those tectonic plates, which we know they produce energy, it's when they shift, they shove a whole bunch of water up or out. And that tsunami goes in both, goes in both directions, okay, from each other. So depending on how big it is, when you're at the epicenter, it could be like a 30-foot wave. When you're out in the middle of the ocean, that's not that bad. But obviously it builds and it brings in all that water into what we saw what the tsunami actually does. And we know for a fact that the first wave typically isn't the strongest. It is the second and the third wave that typically is the strongest. And they can be up to three to four hours apart. Hence why, like I said, I don't know if you saw some of the other videos, in Russia, just as, mesh, just as many people died in the first wave as they did the second wave. Because the second wave was about like three hours after it. Because it was so far out in the ocean. So, like, you had all these people, oh, we need to rescue them. We need to... All those people were gone on the second wave. Because that's what... That's, like I said, that's how far it came to take them out. Okay. A video of that. Okay. So... What we know as the, the side effect of a major earthquake is tsunamis. Earthquakes generate tsunamis. With tsunamis, their rapid movement across the ocean causes changes in the atmospheric pressure. When the atmospheric pressure starts to alter the ionosphere, the geometric field starts to alter. Now we have another thing that is affecting the electromagnetic field on the planet. So we've got one that spurred on all these other side effects. Okay, so but what is, what in the world is that, is that even saying? What is that trying to tell us? I'm trying to erase it, I promise, okay. All right, so what it's saying is when an earthquake, or when an earthquake occurs, it causes a tsunami. So we have like a tectonic plate kind of here, and we've got this other tectonic plate that with this earthquake has shifted up. It's shifted up all this water, all this pressure, and to such a degree that it's created so much energy, so much quantity of charge and force that it's affecting the ionosphere, which we'll get to. It's affecting way up here in the atmosphere. That's what that shift is occurring because so much, I'm going to draw like a little, sorry, my, that's supposed to be a cloud. <laughs> that's supposed to be a cloud. Can't you see I'm an amazing artist? Can't you tell? So, okay, it's, it's, it's shifting up so much force and so much pressure that it's hitting up into the, it's changing atmospheric pressure and it's affecting all the way up into the ionosphere. So why is that a problem? So in two, there's this amazing article. Um, and two, like I said, because it alters the ionosphere, it also affects our electromagnetic field because that's how high up it goes. That's how much force it's producing. So there's this amazing article that talks about the impact of earthquakes and tsunamis on the ionosphere, which we'll get into what part of our atmosphere that actually is. It's $50 just to look at that article. So for me to go into detail on that, 
you're going to have to take the class. So it's an amazing article. It explains a lot in detail. It's amazing research. But again, you know, research that's done by the private sector, you got to pay for. Do you guys know that? You guys understand what I'm saying there? So a research that's done by like NASA and OSHA, those are government agencies. They have to make their stuff public. Like their funding has to be public for the most part. Stuff that's done by institutions, uh, that's done by private companies, you have to pay to even look at their research. That's kind of the difference. Okay. A little side tip for you. Okay. So we know that these tsunamis affect our atmosphere. We can, we can plainly see that. And like I said, that was demonstrated too um, in the 2005 earthquake. Remember you guys saw that one clip of like all those little dots? Those were indicators, especially the red ones, those were indicators of what was hitting the ionosphere, what was hitting the upper, upper part of our atmosphere and what effect it was having. And you, if you, did you guys notice the clock? I mean, it was going hours out into like the next day. So this isn't something that just like is boom and it's done. This has like aftermath effect. Okay. So with tsunamis, this is the one piece of that article that was actually free to look at. The <laughs> so the uh, approximate IGWs. Now, what is an IGW? An IGW is an internal gravity wave. What? Okay. Remember, remember our, all of our equations. So the synchronism of this uh, internal gravity wave detected in the ionosphere and tsunamis in the ocean testifies to the early generation of eternal internal gravity waves and indicates that the atmospheric waves lead the tsunami that generated this wave. It takes about an hour for the atmospheric wave to reach the lower ionosphere. One hour. Um, go ahead and go to, just super quick, uh, go to slide 19. This is the ionosphere. You see how that's the first two layers before space? That is how high up that goes. That's the amount of force that that triggers. The earthquake, as well as the tsunami, all the way up here. Guess what this, other, this outer sphere is called? Magnetosphere. Oh, what's that? Oh my gosh, let's get into it. So, here's what we're talking about. So these internal gravity waves can be detected before the, the basically the wave, because you know we've got buoys and stuff here out in the ocean that'll detect now a tsunami. The eternal, the, sorry, internal, the internal gravity waves that are pushed off from this can be detected in the atmosphere all the way up in the ionosphere within an hour before the trigger is detected out in the ocean. That's how fast it moves. Velocity. Remember we talked about velocity? That's where that plays in. So that's how much of a force that actually generates. So it's not just like, I like to say, it's not just a land fart, okay? Does that make sense? It's not just a land fart. It's producing so much push on gravity as well as force and energy up from it that it affects that higher portion of our atmosphere. So we know, what do we know? We know, uh, We know magnetism is being affected. We
We know electricity is being affected. We know gravity is being affected. You think the planet's honestly going to survive that? First off, a credit to God's creation, it's amazing the planet's still in one piece after all that. Okay. So we know all those things are being affected not only by, so I'm going to do, uh, do square here. We know for a fact these two right here are being affected by the highest power. That's a problem. Okay. So we know that this internal gravity wave is so forceful and it's shooting so far up into the atmosphere that we know we can detect it before it ever gets detected out in the ocean. All right, the ionosphere, why is it important? You can see, too, why it's so high. And, two, we're going to talk about the magnetosphere. Um, so go ahead and go to the go to slide 21. So what is the magnetosphere? It's the outer barrier of the outer barrier of the magnetosphere is called the magnoplause. So it's literally part of the atmosphere that'll put a pause or it'll deflect. Why is that important? And it separates the domain of the planetary magnet. The, the magnetic field. So that outer sphere is kind of where our magnetic field taps out for the most part, like the strength of it. Okay. And solar winds that blow outside of it. Its location is determined by the pressure balance between the solar winds and the planetary magnetic field. Solberg, what are you talking about? I'm about to show you. Okay. So, let me do this. Sorry, I have to apply, like, pressure to get this to. Okay. Okay, okay. This is a very clean board. It doesn't like to. Okay. So, here is our planet. Our lovely little misshaped Earth. Like I said, artistry is not my thing. Okay. So, here's our planet. We have how many layers? How many layers do we have? So we've got like one, two, three, four, five. Okay. One, two, three, five. This is our lovely little atmosphere. Now, when you look at the planet, it looks like this. It's just this thin layer around the planet. Very fragile. Okay. But here are kind of our layers. So we know that... An earthquake, as well as the tsunami, are affecting all the way to these two layers. I can do that better. This is the ionosphere, these two layers. It's affecting these two layers all the way up into here. Messing them over, okay? So the magnetosphere, that is this upper layer here, which we classify as outer space. Because this is where our sun really can wreak havoc on our planet. So think about this. This is our big, glorious sun. And it is spitting stuff at us all the time. And we'll get into what that stuff is. So this part is defined as the outer layer of our electromagnetic field that pushes off and breaks off the, what is hitting us from the sun. That's how that sphere is defined. What happens to that sphere? Let's find out. Okay, so that's what we know it's defined as. Okay. So changes in the ionosphere and the magnetosphere, what happens? Generated by powerful dynamic forces at the center of our world. Okay. 
at the center of our world, our magnetosphere shields us from erosion. What? So we know the ionosphere. Oh, it didn't want to work. Come on. The ionosphere and the magnetosphere are what shield us and actually keep our atmosphere in place. That's what that's saying. So, the magnetosphere shears us from erosion of our atmosphere by solar winds. So let's look at what are solar winds. So we have solar winds that are constantly spewing at our planet. These are charged particles. Dun, dun, dun. So imagine if this is gone, we now have a dual effect on our flow of electricity. Not only from our planet, but now from the sun. Two things. Oh, look. Oh, gee. I guess I'll put a two there. We've got, hence to the power of, so we've got solar winds that are charged particles, erosion, so stuff that erodes, the, that'll erode all of our atmosphere, uh, as well as particle radiation. What? We got to deal with radiation? Solar radiation that spit off in massive ejections, which are massive clouds of energetic and magnetized, magnetized solar plasma and radiation. Radiation, what will say to the second power, we'll be conservative. Magnetism, man, well, maybe I'll take that to the third power. Because now it's really being affected, right? Okay. And that's just what's coming from the sun. Cosmic rays from deep space. What are cosmic rays? Where are they coming from? Who is pushing them towards us? You're going to have to take the class to find out. Okay, all right, so both increasing CO2 levels. Is CO2 bad for us? Do we like not like CO2? Our body doesn't really respond well to CO2. Problem, okay. Increasing CO2 levels and changes in the Earth's magnetic field. Man, changes in the Earth's magnetic field affect the upper atmosphere. These poor guys. They're doomed. Affect the upper atmosphere, including its charged portion, portion known as the ionosphere. There are charges in here. It is literally charged to protect us. Like, set in charge as well as it is charged. You get what I'm saying? It is charged to protect us. But now it can't. Now it can't. We got a problem. So change, so we again, we're changing the magnetic field effect of the upper atmosphere, which includes the charged portion, also known as the ionosphere. The Earth's magnetic field is vital for keeping our atmosphere in place. You mess with this, you mess with this, you mess with this. Now, these are gone. Because remember, those are in place to erode these guys. Rolled back like a scroll. Does that make sense? We're, good. We're, we're there? We're there. Yes. Those atmospheres are gone. Nothing is protecting us from this or from this. Guys, that's just what's happening outside of the planet. Not what's happening on planet Earth. Not what's happening on the planet. That's just happening like outside the planet. This is why we've got all this stuff falling. We've got 
Magnetism affected, we'll just say to the third power, again, to be, you know, just cautious. Uh, electricity affected, two things at least affecting electricity, two things affecting gravity. From the ground as well as the sky, let alone what's happening from the sun and outer and our outer space, like outer, outer space. All those things, and again, this is why we can see in scripture, they say, the lucky ones are the ones that died. The king of kings, the governors of governors, the billion and trillion and gazillionaires, the lucky ones are the ones that died. And why are they going into caves? And why are they asking for the mountains to fall on them? Because they're trying to get to the closest place where everything is somewhat normal. Because whether you're here or you're here, the closer you can get to the center of the planet, it's going to be the most normal. Hence why they're going into caves. They're trying to get as deep as they can. Did that all make sense to you guys? Yes. Wonderful. Okay. Oh, and I did good on time. Okay, questions. Here we go. We're going to do Q&A. Diane, would you mind grabbing the mic? We are going to open it up to questions. I'm going to try and erase this as much as I can. I, I think I need a... I think I need a spray. I can't do it. Where, yeah, I can take that mic. Okay. And then, because um, that cord is long enough. And you can take this one. Yay. Did you guys, so did, did that kind of make more sense to you guys to explain it that way? That's why for some of this, sorry, I got lipstick all over now. That's why for some of this, it was like, it, I just needed to draw it out for to kind of make sense, more, more sense. All right, come on, questions. I know you guys got them. Questions, questions. Marsha's got a question. Do the plates underneath the earth, do they ever shift back into place or do they always stay out of place until the next tsunami comes? So they, it's not like, and I know what physical law you might be thinking of, like for every action there's an equal and just, uh, you know, for every action, there's a positive and opposite reaction. So they never like go place in like that. Like the only way they would go place is like if the tectonic planes, because remember the tectonic plates also produce kinetic energy, which also affects gravity. So maybe I should have put to the fourth power. But so we have a tectonic plate kind of here. And we've got, you know, pressure and stuff that builds up here. And say we've got a tectonic plate here. Well, that pressure builds and like say it'll shift it up. Well, depending on what that pressure balance is, it could shift it back, but it would all depend on pressure and velocity and what's happening in that, in that place. So could, uh, could a stronger force like push this and shove this back in place? It could, but it would probably still be somewhat shifted. It wouldn't completely return to normal. Hence why the planet after this, it's never really normal. It's never really life as it was. And that's the point to kind of remember too, of like with all of this and the seals and everything, the planet, I'm like we have to find another way to live. Humanity has to find a different way to live. The way of life that we had known it at that point in time, obviously we can't go back to because the planet wasn't what it was. Hence why we're not gonna pop up like daisies, okay? It's gonna take us a minute. There are generations, literally generations between those passages of scripture. Next question. Um, I have a question from one of the online viewers. Yeah. Um, her name is Jody Porter. Jody. Uh, she has, actually two parts uh one is what will the effect of the charges from the sun etc be on the planet and then the second part how long is this expected to last well obviously like i said 
It's not like the planet bounces back like that. It's just the planet is what it is. It's not like we have enough of an earthquake and it reverses back to its normal state. It is what it is. And that's why literally we have to learn how to live again. Humanity will need to learn how to live again. Life as they know it will, will, won't be like that. Once those poles shift, they're in place. And they're not moving for, I mean, how many millennia? How many millions? I mean, like, how long have we been keeping record on the planet and we still haven't seen something like that happen? So once it's like that, once it, it goes through its reversal, it's going to be like that for another, God only knows how long. Now, the first part of it was charged particles from the sun. Yes. How is that affecting Earth? Mm -hmm. effect will it have so Earth? imagine being trapped in a tanning bed and you literally can't get out. That's just one part of what's happening. Because remember, we have solar winds, we have radiation, we have all these charged particles hitting the planet. So kind of think of Mars thereabouts. Like Mars doesn't really have an atmosphere. Our atmosphere is almost gone. We know it's still there because life is somewhat still going on. So it's theorized in like in the lower crevices, deeper valleys. Again, the closer to the center of the earth that you get, it's going to be relatively normal. There could be pockets of atmosphere while the planet is healing. So, but again, you're going to want to get as far away from all that radiation. Do you, you guys know what radiation is, right? Do you guys have an idea? Okay. So, say, so say we have, I'm like, wait, let me stop. Maybe let me just explain what radiation is. Why is, you know, radiation a problem? So, say we have, like, human, human cells, we have these lovely human cells. They're so awesome. They're regular human cells. Radiation, like gamma radiation or many of the other radiations we have. So we know like microwaves, microwaves are is radiation. Okay, your microwave produces radiation. Your, so microwaves are about an inch. That's the wave that it produces. Hence why. If you have a screen, you notice your microwaves always have this screen on the door. It blocks these inch waves. Hence, it excites the water molecules in your food, hence heating it up, but it doesn't get out. Okay? That's... Oh, hey, thanks, Siri. <laughs> Siri, is that okay? All right. So that is a form of radiation. Like uh, gamma waves or any other kind of radiation that's really harmful. Uh, radiation that comes off of the sun. So remember, this is a cell. They're really tiny. Does that kind of make sense? Isn't that sound effect, like, help you to understand that? Isn't that cool? Yeah. I know. I know. I can't help it. So that is kind of what radiation does to our cells. The, the wave, the frequency of radiation is so tight that it destroys human cells. It's not like this. It's not like microwaves. It's like this. So it utterly obliterates human cells. That's why, like, if you ever have, like, the three-mile three mile nuclear crisis, three-mile high nuclear crisis, or uh, if you ever uh, work on a, a sub, you work on a, a submarine and you get exposed, you literally cook from the inside out, just like your food kind of does. Your organs and cells literally cook from the inside out because they've been hit by these waves and they're excited and then they just bust and die. That's why radiation's a problem. Does that help you describe? That's just one 
facet of what is hitting the planet because our protective layers of our atmosphere are gone. This is why, again, let the rocks just fall on, let the mountains fall on us. The lucky ones were the ones that died. Can you imagine all the cancers? Can you imagine literally human beings walking the planet and being cooked from the inside out because of radiation? That, again, this is what's just happening from outside the planet, not what's happening on the planet. Does that help? Does that, hopefully you, you can see if that kind of answers her question. That's what those charged particles, that radiation is. Cool? Did anyone ever explain to you what radiation is in such a cool fashion? I know, you'll never see an x-ray the same way again. You're gonna be like, oh! <laughs> That's why, like I said, you know, like x-rays, x-rays aren't like gamma rays. They're, they're not as tight, they're not as crazy. Okay, I have been given. Sorry guys, that is all the time we have. Thank you so much. Again, hopefully this was a teaser to go ahead and take the class. All right, let's go ahead and take our offering. Hallelujah, God, we thank you so much. We bless you, we glorify you, we praise you, Jesus. God, we thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. Yes, God, that your mercies are new every morning, and we bless you and we praise you, Jesus. Now, God, we ask that you would bless multiply and increase this seed unto your kingdom. God, I ask that your people are blessed and I put a hedge of protection of the blood of Jesus round about them. God, let them have a glorious conquest of a week in Jesus name. Amen and amen. amen. You're dismissed.